Hey everyone, Charlie here with a tutorial on in, in how to prepare and polish a metallographic sample. Now, uh, this is the first tutorial I've ever done, so I apologize for some mistakes that I made during recording and, and editing. I'll promise they'll get better as, as I make more. Uh, the first thing I noticed with this particular tutorial is that it, it ended up being a lot longer than I would have liked. So I have to break it down. I have to break it down in smaller pieces. Uh, I will do a total of uh, seven videos. On the first part, I will give you guys an introduction, uh, uh, an introduction on how uh, and why you want to prepare a metallographic sample. Then I'll mount the samples in the longitudinal orientation, some samples then on the third part, some samples in the transverse orientation. Uh, on the fourth part, I'll uh, start polishing with silicon carbide. Uh, sandpapers and then I'll move into the more complex diamond uh, suspensions and diamond pads uh, finally uh, I'll do the same for the longitudinal cross section because they're a little more tricky and once they are completely polished uh, from the beginning to the end I will talk about how to get the sample uh, spotless for microscopy so I hope the way I've broken down the video makes it a lot easier for you to digest all the information I know it's long, but trust me, this is saving you and me a lot of time. Uh, also notice that if you're just doing transverse cross-sections, you may skip uh, parts 2 and 6. So that's convenient. Uh, I'll try to make the transition between the videos as smooth as possible uh, with a little short introduction just like this uh, at the beginning of each video. And that's it. I hope, uh, let's see what I have for, for the first in part for the introduction. Hey guys, uh, my name is Charlie Sanabria. I am a graduate student at the Applied Superconductivity Center. And if you're watching this video, uh, it's probably because you've been hired to perform some metallographic uh, samples, right? Now, in this video, I will walk you through step by step on how to go from all of this that you see right here to this that you see right here. So what are these things? These are what we scientists call samples, and a sample is literally any physical object that has been prepared uh, to perform a particular study. In our case, in this laboratory, we work mostly with superconductors, therefore your samples will very often be made of metals, most likely always be made of metals, and uh, very often in the form of a wire like this one right here. And these, well, these are metallographic pucks. And what they are is your sample inside a thermoset polymer, which its job is to hold everything in place so you can grind this and polish this essentially to get a slice of it, to get a nice cross section of your sample. So why would anybody want to do that? Well, most of the times actually to take a picture of it so you can study its structure. Uh, for example, here's a picture of a superconducting wire that will be used in the inner fusion reactor. And then other times you may want to know what your sample is made of, in case you don't know. And you can perform some x-ray diffraction and by looking at the x-ray patterns you can find out what is your sample made of, what components it made, is it made of, and how much of that component is in there. But whatever it is that you're doing with your sample, the most important thing is that you want it to be as close to a perfect cut as you can get it. Uh, that means you don't want any foreign particles in your sample, you don't want any scratches, any smudges, nothing. You just want your sample in a perfect cross section. But before we jump into how to get a really nice cross section of your sample, I wanted to talk to you guys about why. Now, as a researcher, it's very important that you ask yourself, why am I doing this? And in this case, it means that you need to know everything about your sample. You need to know who made this and how do they make it and what are they trying to find out by looking at this structure. So don't be afraid to ask these questions. I'm sure someone in the lab, probably the person who gave you the sample, will be able to answer anything you need to know to actually have a goal and a purpose for making this. I'm not going to go into much detail about what these samples are. But what we have here is four types of samples. We have first these kind of wires in a circular shape. And these guys, I actually want them to be in a longitudinal orientation. So they'll be laying flat like that inside your uh, thermoset polymer puck. 
and then we have the straight samples that these straight samples, I actually want them in a transverse cross section. So they'll be standing like this inside the metallographic puck. Uh, we also have these uh, thicker guys that I also want them in a transverse cross section. These are precursors of wires. And finally, we just have a, an aluminum block. I just want to show you guys uh, what uh, aluminum would look like inside a puck and one and polished. Now, thermoset polymers, uh, they are, they usually start off in the form of a powder or a liquid and once they, they're cured under certain conditions all the polymer chains interlink together and they become really really hard just like these pucks right here. Now in this lab we use mainly two types of uh, thermoset polymers. We use this one right here uh, called conductomet and make sure it is conductomet not some other uh, phenolic resin and this one requires fairly high temperatures and pressures uh, for it to cure. Um, and then we have uh, the epoxies. We also use epoxies a lot here. And these don't require high temperatures and pressure, so these, these are uh, very useful when you can't afford your sample getting too hot or go under too much pressure. So th this, uh, the one downside about the epoxies though is that they're not electrically conductive. And sometimes you do want your puck to be electrically conductive, especially if you're uh, taking pictures under the scanning electron microscope. Uh, you want the puck to be electrically conductive, and the conductomet, it is electrically conductive. So this one's really good for the SEM, and this one's really good in case you uh, don't want your sample to get too hot. Now a lot of people prefer conductomet because it fills in really well, it cures quickly, and is very, very hard. Uh, however, the epoxies have an advantage, and is that you can make really complex metallographic mounts with epoxies. However, you run into trouble uh, if you go into the SEM uh, because it's not electrically conductive. And also, sometimes epoxies don't fill in very well. They get they get some bubbles, and, uh, and bubbles can give you trouble. Uh, but they're both useful, and today I'll be using both of them, actually. All right, that's it for the introduction. Uh, if you are preparing a longitudinal sample, click here. Uh, to take you to that video. However, if you're going straight to the transverse cross section, you can click here. Uh, and I'll see you in a little bit.